I didn't honestly think I'd be making another Dirty Bomb video. I had uninstalled the game and thought that was the end of the chapter for me. But then you get that itch. I've been playing Battalion 1944, mostly hipfire as it turns out, which for me seems like a sort of gateway mechanic back to this hallowed turf. And suddenly in the middle of the night, I find myself reinstalling Dirty Bomb almost eight months after Splash Damage announced they were ending development. First ping of interest was to wonder what the player numbers were like. It's all good me wanting to play, but if there's no one to kick my ass and call me something unsavory, then how would I know I was playing Dirty Bomb? Well, I didn't have to worry that much, it turns out. Even the day the announcement happened, the numbers of the game didn't really drop, or even in a couple of days after. Which feels like it gives some sort of insight into the silent majority of people playing. They're perhaps not the ones on the forums or on Reddit, with all the frothing opinions and up-to-the-minute info. They're the ones going about their day-to-day -day and playing the games they like when they like. And they still like DB, so they kept playing. There was a general decline over that period for sure, but we even saw that trend start pretty soon after the 1.0 launch. There is a slight uptick that coincides with a short but sizable Twitch viewership spike, which I believe is from Shroud checking out the game. I didn't actually see it, but I'm told it wasn't overly favourably received but it helped bump the numbers up a bit. The peaks feel about half what they were around that time though, but they are consistent. There are still a core group of players keeping Dirty Bomb alive. If you jump on at off-peak times, then there's not a whole bunch of server choice, but there are full servers to join and skilled people to bump heads with. So if you're the sort of person who used to play and just wants a couple of matches in the evening to warm your aim up, or maybe just enough Dirty Bomb to stop the withdrawal shakes, then it's totally playable in that casual way, even today. And just quickly, if you are enjoying the video, please remember to leave a thumb in the direction of your general enjoyment. It really does help me out. What's more, if you read Reddit, there are people still trying to have small events. Someone's pushing for a Dirty Bomb Sundays, where people join online and make an effort to play once a week. There are other posts from people spinning up Oceanic servers for the folks down Sydney way, so they can have a match or two now the official servers are no longer in that region. There's still enthusiasm around, that love for DB didn't stop on the 19th of October last year. I'd also recommend you read Neil Alfonso, aka Exodore's interview with WCCF Tech, which in part is about looking back at Dirty Bomb's development. It's a slightly warts and all discussion about how things progressed, some things that could have been guessed from the outside, like sticking with Unreal Engine 3, are touched on, and it even sets the scene for how the final decisions to stop development came to pass. For me, it helps a little to get more of that often hidden side of the project and see how it marries with my experience of being a player along for the same ride as the development team, but clearly in very different seats. I've touched on this before, but every time I come back from Dirty Bomb from a break, I'm struck with just how right everything feels. There's a crispness and a purity salted with those movement skills that just elevates what, made by another company, could have been a very middle-of-the-road title. I'll also say that DB still stands above other FPS games for its character development and the sense of weaving that into the game. I'd forgotten some of these superbly written lines from Stoker, and hearing them with fresh ears made me love them all over again. It's a prettier game than In My Memory 2. There's care gone into the art side that perhaps the low graphics configs could never hope to maintain or emulate, and I think that DB really never got that credit for. The peak of this is probably Castle, one of the final maps released for the game. But with all the trials and tribulation that made up Dome's lengthy gestation, it's somehow nice to see that book ended with arguably one of the game's best maps. There's almost been a weight lifted from Dirty Bomb's shoulders now. The experience of playing is not of a game with not really enough players, with some heavy, non-ideal monetization, and wondering what the future holds. The future already arrived in October last year, and we've all had time to come to terms with what that means for us. So to log into the game today is to see a core of like-minded people that make the clear choice to spend their time hip-firing rather than ADSing, wall-jumping rather than proning, and always, always throwing pancakes to shoot at. I'm happy it's still around for people like me who wanted to enjoy it all over again, and even more happy to see player numbers sit at a stable, if reduced, level so that it can offer that experience that we all love. 
I'm certainly going to be keeping Dirty Bomb installed for the foreseeable future. Leave a comment right now with your thoughts and feelings about Dirty Bomb. Do you still play? Does watching this footage now make you want to reinstall? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll be reading every single one of them. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumb up, tap the old sub button and engage that overly confusing bell icon to be notified when the next video is ready and waiting. Thanks again. I will see you next time. Take care.